In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the equivalent annual cost method in capital budgeting, sometimes abbreviated as EAC. So uh, in capital budgeting, there is something called the NPV rule. And it basically says that, look, if you have two projects, let's suppose project A and project B, and you have to choose between two of them, right? Uh, NPV rule says pick the project with the higher NPV. Why? Because the project with the higher NPV is the one that is adding more value to your business or to your firm. So for example, if project A has an NPV of like $1,000 and project B has an NPV of like 1 million, for example, uh, then uh, the NPV rule says if you have to pick between the two of them, pick project B because it has a higher NPV. However, this argument assumes that both projects A and B have equal lives. In other words, if project A is going to last you for 10 years, then project B is also going to last you for 10 years. And it turns out that if the two projects have unequal lives, so for example, if uh, project B is only going to last you for three years, whereas project A is going to last you for 10 years or something different from three years, it turns out that you cannot directly compare NPVs in this fashion. And so that is where the equivalent annual cost method comes in handy. Equivalent annual cost method allows you to compare projects that have unequal lives. So here's an illustrative example. So let's suppose that you are a regular runner and uh, you're looking at buying a running shoe. Now one shoe is a Nike shoe. It's going to cost you $65 today, but then it's going to last you for four years. Now you can also opt to buy one of those generic brands or somewhat low quality brands that you get, let's say at Walmart or Target. That's going to cost you $20, but it's only going to last you for one year. And so in terms of timelines, you're looking to spend with the Nike shoe $65 here, and then you're going to get some benefits out of running for the next four years. Or you're looking to spend $20 here, and you're going to get the benefit of running for one year. Now, here's the punchline. If you were only looking to spend money on a running shoe once, if you were not a regular runner, then yes, it probably makes sense to just buy the generic brand because, hey, it's going to cost you less and who cares? After one year, you're not in the market for another running shoe. But you are a regular runner, which means that after one year, you're going to want to replace this shoe with another one. And there, as you can probably appreciate now, it doesn't make sense to compare this negative 65 with this negative 20. Technically, what you should be doing is saying, hey, if I buy the generic brand, how much am I looking to spend over the next four years? Then you are doing an apples to apples comparison. You're looking at a shoe which is going to last you for four years with a shoe that's not going to last you for four years, but you're taking a look at how much you're looking to spend on this shoe over the next four years. So technically speaking, with the generic brand, you're going to be spending another $20 at the end of year one, which will help you run for another year and then another $20 here, and another $20 here. And so the equivalent annual cost method from an intuition standpoint says, hey, what you should do is figure out how much you're looking to spend on this shoe, which in this case is clear, negative 65. And on the generic brand, you should figure out how much you're looking to spend. Yeah, you're saying $80, but yeah, technically speaking, uh, you should never add up dollar values that are occurring at different points in time. You should discount them. So technically you need to discount this $20 back one year, this $20 back two years, this $20 back three years. In fact, if you do that, the net present value comes out to 71.54. And by the way, here I'm assuming a discount rate of 8%. So what I've done is basically discounted these $20 at the rate of 8% every year, 71.54. So look, now which one is the more expensive shoe? Turns out that the generic brand is more expensive. Would you rather spend $65 today or would you rather spend $71 or 54 cents today for a shoe that is going to last you for four years or for the pleasure of running for the next four years? This is the better option. And that is the idea 
behind or the intuition behind the equivalent annual cost method. Equivalent annual cost method says that, look, you have to do an apples to apples comparison. You cannot compare a shoe that is going to last you for four years with a shoe that's only going to last you for one year. So what you should technically be doing is either extending this timeline to ensure that you're looking at how much you're looking to spend on a shoe over four years. The other approach to this, and I'm going to erase some of the numbers over here, is that rather than looking at how much you're spending in total, think about how much you are looking to spend on an annual basis on the shoe. Now with the generic brand, it's pretty clear. On an annual basis, you're looking to spend about $20 every year. But when you spend $65 on this Nike shoe, this helps you through the next four years. So equivalent annual cost method says, hey, how much is this $65 in terms of how much you would have spent on this shoe over the next four years, over the next four years? In other words, put differently, you know, how can you make a timeline which looks more like this? Like how much would you be spending on this shoe over the next four years? So what is the equivalent annual cost of this Nike shoe? And the way you do that is it basically say, hey, what is the what is the annuity whose present value is essentially equal to $65? In other words, how much would I be spending here, 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 here? What is that constant amount that I'd be spending over the next four years such that the present value of that is 65 or negative 65, right? It's the almost the opposite of what we did here. Here we knew what the annual expenditure was and we were calculating the present value and then comparing that present value with this 65. Conversely, we are figuring out the annual expenditure that is going to occur here and figuring out what is the present value or what that amount needs to be such that the present value of that is 65. Now, that basically involves using the present value of uh, annuity factors table, or you can use Excel. I'm not gonna go into that lengthy calculation here with you, but it turns out that the annuity whose present value equals 65, $18.17. So those of you who are interested in sort of knowing what I did, I basically went in Excel and used the payment function in Excel, which allows me to figure out the uh, annuity when the present value is known, uh, in which I put in the interest rate as 8%. The number of time periods was four because I will be spending over four years uh, the present value was negative uh, 65. And then this is a annuity due because I'll be uh, making the first expenditure, you know, at time period zero. So in, in Excel, you have to select the option of one for annuity due. Not that important. The main point here is that spending $65 on a Nike shoe today is as if you're spending about $18.17 each year over the next four years, starting today, which is less than how much you would be spending on the generic shoe. On the generic shoe, it is as if you're spending $20 on an annual basis. So hence the term equivalent annual cost. On an equivalent basis, what is the annual cost? No surprises that again, Nike is cheaper. You're spending 18 here compared to 20 here. And so this is the intuition of the equivalent annual cost method. It says that whenever you are looking at two investments which have unequal lives, and after the useful life of one of the investments is over, you are going to be replacing it, then you must evaluate the two investments based on their equivalent annual cost. In this case, the equivalent annual cost of the Nike shoe is $18.17. The equivalent annual cost of the generic shoe is $20 because $18.17 is less than $20. Nike is the better investment.